making a change today. The lid that been taking the pain away. I heard you was giving your chain away. That's kind of like giving your fame away. Hey, battle face. Welcome back to another vlog. It's me, Andrea, and it is November 9th. It's Thursday, it's my Friday. So um, I'll be off after today for the next three days. And I got a lot of running around to do. One being spending a lot of money on some game that my son wants because y'all, my son's birthday is tomorrow. He's about to be 13. I'm about to have a 13 year old y'all. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out if I want to put this cap on my put this cap on for today i just finished getting dressed to go to work but these are the scrubs that i'm wearing today this is actually one of my favorite pair i have a bunch of this specific scrub like this outfit in multiple colors this one and the green one so far are my favorites but it's just a long sleeve shirt i love the long sleeves because i'm usually super cold in the hospital and then the bottoms they just look so flattering on me so I love these so much. And they're not expensive at all. And I think that's what I really liked. <laughs> I think that's what I really liked is these look really good, but they're not um they're not super expensive or anything like that. Y'all, where's my phone? What time is it? Because I accidentally left my watch out and um I'm gonna sit y'all on the bed. I don't have a tripod right now. I accidentally left my Apple Watch out in Louisiana when I went to see Trey because I actually just came from there a few days ago <laughs> visiting Trey and that was super fun y'all my man got promoted so I went out there to pin him and I'm so proud because he deserved it all the nonsense that he went through getting back to where he's at and getting that rank he deserved it do I want to wear this today y'all I'm trying to Oh shoot, I almost forgot my badge. I'm trying to hurry up because I want to stop and get breakfast. I just don't know if I want to wear this today. You know what? I'm not. I'm not going to wear it today. I'm kind of mad because my edges, I put, a, I put a bonnet on, but my edges is all over the place. That's the reason I was thinking about it in the first place. Um, okay. But for my scent that I'm wearing today, I ended up putting on this. This is the Brazilian Crush Pistachio and Salted Caramel. It is, I love this so much. And I paired that with my Coconut Cove, this one here. And it just smells so good. I try to put on my lighter, like, fruity scents or like the really smooth scents to go to work i know some people say oh you shouldn't put on no i wear my scents to work i just make sure i'm not overdoing it or anything like that right i hope my phone is downstairs and i just forgot my sweater i wear this this is one of my jackets that i wear to work and then i have this cute little there we go i have this cute little pendant on it it's super cute oh you know what i'm also gonna grab my coat um come on Even though I have a long sleeve on, I still like to wear a jacket because I'd be that cold. I'm also gonna grab my coat. That way when I'm sitting in the office and I'm having to chart, I can just throw this on because again, I really do be, y'all yeah, got all my scripts up there. I gotta organize. It's, it's a mess in here. Um, I'd be that cold. And then I'm also gonna buy a little heater, okay? They say no heaters, but I don't think they understand how cold it is, and especially somebody for, for like me, who is very anemic and very, very small. I, I, I need heat, I need, I need insulation. What are you doing? Cause you look like you just did something. No, seriously, you look like you just did something. What did you do? Look at y'all, look at her. Look at her, what did you do? Come on, Sam, where's my phone? Because. What time is it? I don't have time to figure this out. Did you pee somewhere? Okay, it's two minutes until she did something, y'all. She did something, she just ran, and I don't know what she did. Where is it? No? Did you do something or not? No. I, 
I just pick the Okay. I'm not about to play with you. You just have a guilty face. I don't think she did anything, y'all. I, I, I don't know. She does this thing where she'll look and she's like, I didn't do it. Like, she's, I didn't do it. And I'm like, what did you do? And she'll like, just take off running. You know how dogs look guilty? Cats do that too. And y'all, I'm sitting here talking about I have two minutes to run out the door and I didn't even pack my, repack my bag yet. But, um, oh y'all, this is another one of my perfumes that I absolutely, so this is my favorite, absolute favorite perfume. And this is the main one that I wear to, um, the hospital because it's very soft. It's a very subtle, soft skin smelling scent, but it smells so good. It literally smells like, like outside in a good way in vanilla and it's so good i just like sweet smelling perfumes but obviously it's almost gone so i was trying to give it a break before i have to re-up on it and i gotta pack my bag so this is my main hospital bag this cute michael kors bag that i bought i absolutely love and i switch out between this one and this black one here i carry this one yesterday but because i want to take my um my ipad and a few extra things i'm gonna go ahead and move everything into here now that i am probably running behind i'm gonna go ahead and grab my things and go while i'm at it oh shoot, shoot, shoot. wait what in the world oh y'all thought i lost one of my freaking um airpods but while i'm at it i'm gonna grab this extra battery for my camera since I am going to try to vlog today. Um, I feel like we're making good time, possibly. I'm not 100% sure about this, but yeah. And then we're gonna go ahead and head out the door. All right, y'all, so I just pulled up to the hospital. I'm about to go ahead and walk in there. I have about five minutes to get up to the department, which is fine. But I almost forgot I have an appointment with Behavior Health today at eight o'clock. That is in about two hours. As far as work, I'm gonna see if I can take the floors or at least one of the floor. I'll take the floor that have treatments. That way I can go ahead and give my treatments at starting at seven o'clock. Mm -mm, is that gonna work? Oh, sh yeah, it's gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and give my treatments starting at seven o'clock. That way by about 7.30, I should be done giving treatments and I should be ready to head off to my appointments. You can do, because you can do the treatments and, and give medication an hour before the time is supposed to be given or an hour after it's supposed to be given and still be within um, like not too early or not too late given the medication. So if I can start at seven, I should be done with all my patients by 7.30. Charting and all, that way I can head off to my appointment because if I can get everything, if I can get my eight o'clock um, treatments and medications out of the way, I should be good to go into about 1400 maybe depending on what's on the schedule we'll see we'll see but that's how i saw it going in my head anyway but i'm about to go up here and see because if we're not making our own assignments which i don't see why we shouldn't be doing that um then this can go a completely other way and i guess i'm gonna just be sitting in front of a computer screen for the next hour until it's time for me to leave again heading to I got something in my eye <clears throat> heading to my first appointment of the day hold on y'all because I actually do have something in my eye oh oh gosh it was a hair um I'm heading to my first appointment of the day and um I feel like this morning without doing anything at all was hectic for some reason because I don't know I don't know like is hectic only because I have a crap ton of appointments I already told y'all I got a lot going on I got a lot going on when it comes to my mental health and my physical health right now so I have a lot of appointments that I have to go to and with that being said when I am working at the hospital it's kind of hard to balance all of these appointments and being able to be at the hospital you know when I'm supposed to be cover you know being basically just being available 
being reliable right now at the hospital is kind of difficult and it don't make me feel no better it's, I already feel like shit that I'm not there for this team that I'm supposed to be there for but it don't make me feel no better when I voice that hey I have this going on today I have that going on today and I mentioned it the day prior and the day of before any assignments are made I kind of make it known like hey this is what I'm trying to do and um it's either not listened to or kind of dismissed and I just don't like that because now if it, it puts me in a position where I feel like I can't speak up for myself I feel like I have to kind of put those appointments to the side because again I'm on my way to a behavior health appointment so I can get medication adjustments y'all I've already missed this appointment twice I just straight up missed the appointment twice in the name of being at work and learning the things that I'm supposed to be learning and showing that I want to be here in a hospital and work, right? It just it just really makes me feel like shit that I have to be out and about running around and stuff like that. And at first, I used to do it where um, I would be out, out and about running around and I wouldn't get lunch, I wouldn't eat, because right now I'm starving. I'm actually hungry right now. Um, because again, I didn't get to stop at, stop at Starbucks. I didn't get a chance to run downstairs and grab anything from the cafeteria. I didn't get to do any of that stuff because I'm going in to the shift with a game plan. I'm like, all right, I have this appointment, so this is what I plan on doing to m get around not being able to be there, and it just didn't go that way at all. So, yeah, my schedule was all disordered. Y'all, I didn't even grab a Vocera. Like, I am so... I'm, I'm scrambled today. I'm scrambled today, and I feel like that's because people just don't listen. Like, I feel like I deserve to be listened to, you know? Um, yo, I gotta get over it. I feel like I deserve to be listened to, and that wasn't the case. So, I have this appointment that I'm going to. Hopefully, it don't last too long because then I have an appointment in a few hours after this. And I'm taking a lunch. I'm taking my lunch while I'm gone. Usually, I don't. Usually, I don't eat lunch. I just try to hurry up, rush through all my appointments, and then come right back, probably grab something from the vending machine, and call it a day. I'm not doing that today. I'm not. I'm going to this appointment. I got a few minutes in between the two appointments. So I'm gonna go try to go to the store, grab this game for my son's birthday, and rush off to my next appointment, which is at the hospital. So at least I'll be heading right back to the hospital. And that's it. And don't get me wrong, like I'm not trying to complain. Like I'm not complaining because I don't like where I'm at. I like the hospital that I work at. I like my schedule. I like it. I like what I'm doing currently. Maybe because it's still so new and I'm still learning and stuff like that. So I like what I'm doing currently, but I hate that I get into a mindset of needing to be the absolute best at all time. Like, it's like, girl, you are a new RT, a brand new RT. You don't need to be the best at a damn thing right now. Like, I'm learning, you're learning. You don't need to be the best at anything right now because I'd be down on myself. I'd be in those books trying to learn all of these different things. I'll go home and learn things that I heard the doctors talking about or I'll take pictures of like the machines and stuff so I can remember to Google and YouTube it later so I can learn how to use it. And I'm doing all this when I, I it's almost as if I'm rushing as if I don't have time to learn it. You know what I'm saying? If I'm making any sense at all. But it doesn't help me get out of that mindset when it comes to the expectations at the hospital. And I'm only saying what I'm about to say to get opinions because I really think it's an issue, right? So at the hospital that I work, I'm working as an RT, right? So apparently, okay, let me back up. When I worked as a nurse, there was an onboarding process. There was an actual onboarding process, preceptorship for a certain period of time. And that certain period of time was six months at the very least. If you're catching on early and stuff like that, you had to have been in the board in the onboarding process and preceptorship for at least, at least four months, at least. And so and that's that, and that's for new grad nurses, right? And for RT, 
again, this is my first job at an RT school and apparently they give you two weeks in a lab to shadow and learn things in the lab. Then once you go to inpatient and you're working on the floors and in the ER and the ICU and stuff like that, that's another two weeks of training and boom, you should be good, you're on your own. Now I've bought up, you know, I, I've learned, I'm learning to advocate for myself and so I did bring it up like, where's the SOP or what's the protocol? And I only bought it up because I noticed that I ended up um, being placed in, I'm leading the shift. Like, I don't know how to chart correctly. I don't even know where all the floors are in a hospital. I don't know anything about the schedule. I don't know anything about a lot of the, like I, I, I'm new, like I'm new here. So why would you put somebody that's brand new to the department in specialty in the leadership position? That's like taking a, Sorry y'all, my thing is not, this This road is weird. That's like taking a brand new nurse, a brand new RT, a brand new, res like a brand new person at any facility and being like, all right, you're in charge now. No, 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 you had two weeks to learn everything you needed to learn, you're in charge now. And so when I saw that I was lead, I kind of bought it up like, what's the, where's the SOP? Like, what's the protocol? Because I feel like I'm definitely not in any position and I don't feel ready to be leading a shift. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I promise I'm not dragging it. I'm just frustrated at this point because I was asked to come here. They begged me to come to the hospital. I had the option of going to the line at the company or coming to the hospital. And I said, I want to go to the line because I knew I wasn't experienced enough to just be thrown in a hospital. And I kind of figured that's what they're going to try to do is throw me in a hospital on top of me having all these appointments and stuff like that. But they assured me, don't worry about it. We'll take care of you. You'll have adequate enough time to orient to specialty and orient to the hospital. And that just hasn't been the case at all. Because at this point, I still didn't have access to the meds. I still didn't have access to paperwork that I need to lead a shift. I, didn't, I still didn't have access to the systems or anything like that. And again, I'm not trying to drag it because when I say two weeks, I mean a total of four weeks. You're expected to orient, orient for four weeks and you should be good to go and do your job. As a new grad, I think not because you spend two weeks in the, in the PFT lab learning everything you need to know there. And then you go to the floor and you're expected after two weeks to pretty much know what you're supposed to be doing there. You know, it just makes no sense to me because that means you're supposed to know about responding to rapid responses, responding to cold blues, responding to traumas, going to the ICU, doing what you need to do there, assisting with intubations like in two weeks. No, no. So again, when I bought it up, I was made fun of and I just didn't like that. And I feel like I was kind of mocked. I feel like I was kind of made fun of because when I bought it up to obviously leadership, the response was, oh, well, how much time do you think you need? Like six months? Do anybody else need any additional training? Actually, yes. And I said that when she said, what do you need? Like six months? I said, actually, yes. At least four, at the minimum four, you know? It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't even have my license yet and I feel like I'm already in the process of putting it in jeopardy. And that's not okay. I shouldn't have to feel like that, you know? Um, so basically, instead of, I did the two weeks in a lab and I did about four extra, two, two or three weeks on the floor. I'm not here, I am thinking I'm still in training, I'm still learning. And I was wondering why I was thrown into these positions where I shouldn't be thrown into if I am still training or learning, right? And so, hold on. So when I was told that, actually, um, we only have to give you guys two weeks. Like, you're supposed to be on the floor training for two weeks, and you're supposed to be in the lab training for two weeks, and that's about it. So you're lucky we even gave you three weeks type of thing i mean four weeks type of thing woohoo you giving me an extra two weeks of training as a new rt in a new place straight out of school whoop de do you know you're doing me a big favor because you're giving me a few extra weeks of training now are they just throwing new RTs out there like that because it, it was confusing for me um, because there was a night um, just real quick because I'm about to walk into my appointment but one of the another experience that I had and again I'm just sharing my experiences um, I had filled in 
um, for um, some people on some shifts on night shift. And this is what I mean when I say I, I, I don't feel comfortable being left alone. I want to precept and shadow somebody a little bit longer. Yes, I can be hands on. I'm very hands on. I get in there. But as far as being left alone at my own devices, where is my lip gloss? I know I didn't leave my lip gloss. Um, being, you know, just left alone, I'm not comfortable with that because on that shift, right? Um, now, when we came in, it was already super busy. They had just had to intubate a few patients in the ICU. And then they had a, a trauma call down in the ER. Um, it was status yellow, but as they were leaving, we had to, we got a call down because that status yellow ended up being a status red because our patient had um, bleeding in his brain. He's combative, so now we have to intubate him, sedate him, intubate him, and stuff like that. So that's gonna take some time. We go down to the emergency room, we have to do that, right? That's when I got blood all over my shoes and I'm at home scrubbing them with um, some peroxide. Anyway, um, yeah, so then the doctor comes down and he's like, hey, we have a patient upstairs because we had a, um, a um, postpartum patient that was hemorrhaging on the inside. So we're like, hey, we need to go up. We need to transfer her down for an operation. And it's only two of us. It's literally two RTs. Is this RT and me, somebody that's not comfortable, somebody that don't know what I'm doing. And so I'm like, I guess I'm just going to have to fake it till I make it because she's like, which one do you want to take? neither i don't know what i'm doing yet like what do you mean which one do i want to take and so i ended up um going up with the doctor and i'm like we i'm i'm literally as i'm going up as i'm walking you know taking the elevators going to the icu i'm like how do i transport this patient he's talking about transfer of it and this and this and that and how do you think we should do should we just take this whole thing you're asking me my honest professional opinion and as an rt i don't have one of those yet surprise but i'm like all right so i'm thinking maybe maybe because we we've transported before where we just push the whole system right and i'm thinking that's what we're gonna do we're gonna leave her hooked up let's push the whole system so then we're like okay maybe that's just not going to work because we're gonna have to unplug this and blah 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 and i'm like okay transport vent where the hell is even the transport vent like where do i go to get the transport vent how do you even work it and i'm like panicking i'm on a vocera i'm trying to get this other rt i can't get the other rt on a vocera to ask for some advice so i ended up calling one of the rts that was on a previous shift that she's been helping me a, a, a lot too thank god and i call her i'm like hey this is the situation that i'm in i have to transport this patient i don't know what to do what do i do she's like hey just go ahead and take her um bag her down 100% oxygen and then to have one of the nurses take the machine behind you guys boom like that and I'm like Okay, I got it. I'm gonna do that hang up the phone. I'm panicking because I'm like I Have to take I have to take this patient off this life-saving equipment that she's currently hooked up to and bag her on the way down and hopefully I remember how to work this vent well enough to get everything hooked back up the way it's supposed to how do I even put it in standby like I'm panicking y'all obviously on the outside it didn't look like i was panicking but i was panicking so i had to go into the room um go into one of the rooms get the oxygen tank and i'm like calming myself down i'm going through it like i'm on like i'm googling i'm going through like my notes and i'm like this is crazy this is insane why am i in this position and so i get an oxygen tank um turn it on i put the <clears throat> and again all this i'm time i'm trying to like be confident right and so i put the machine on standby unplug her um get her hooked up to the um the 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 what is it the bvm bagging her on the oxygen or whatever and i'm like okay her stats are still looking good okay her heart rate everything okay she's looking good this is this is good she's good on a monitor i'm pumped like you know so we we hit the road we on the way we transporting we go so we make it all the way down to ir and good thing we made it in the room and they're like um as i'm like getting everything ready somebody else is bagging her and then they say this oxygen tank is empty y'all my heart dropped through my ass and i'm like what they say the oxygen tank is empty so now i have to hurry a snatcher off the oxygen tank good thing i'm in the ir just hook her up to the wall real quick and we're good to go in my head i'm like did i did i turn the oxygen tank on you know too much i thought this was a full oxygen tank what like i'm like i'm in my head now because i'm like this could have been bad what if we hadn't made it to this room yet i'm like god i'm googling and looking up like what did i do this wrong what's the oxygen conversion factor how long is it supposed to work and this and that and i'm like 
I shouldn't be in this situation anyway. And before y'all say anything, oh, it's not a big deal. You can bag her without oxygen attached, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's cool. I got it before when I bought up this whole situation out of concern. No, because if you're bagging at room air, that's 21% oxygen. This patient was at 100% oxygen. So if I would have put her on room air, what is she doing? Like if she's needing 100% oxygen, that room air was not going to do anything to her. So she was on a high amount of oxygen for a reason on top of her going into surgery. So yes, for a not so critical patient, bagging at room air probably wouldn't have been a big deal. But for this patient, it was. And I could have killed her. And I didn't like that. So I had to go back up, get another oxygen tank. That way we can transfer trans port her back up and I'm still in my head like how long is this one going to work is this one full y'all turns out I ended up getting I went to the wrong place to get the oxygen thing in the first place it was damn near empty I did not know that I didn't know that that I that I went to where I saw oxygen tanks before I grabbed one and it was halfway empty already um I should have went to a completely different place and got a full one I also turned the oxygen tank up too much because if I would have just cranked it down just a little bit, I'm thinking I'm supposed to open it all the way up. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. So, again, that could have ended up bad. And good thing, I, I mean, I held my own. I, I, I figured it out. I got the patient back to where they needed to be in a safe manner. But, again, how is two weeks enough? That's just me. So I'm still advocating because no, you're not leaving me alone. If if you if you feel like two weeks was enough for me to train and you don't want me to be with anybody, send me back to the company because I'm not about to put anybody else in jeopardy like that. It made me feel like complete shit, but yeah, I'm about to be late now. So let me go ahead and go into my appointment. Hey y'all, what's up? Good morning. It is Friday morning, y'all. It's Friday morning, right? I woke up early this morning at like five, took my butt right back to sleep. My eyes were stuck closed, so this eye was super sore because I don't know if I told y'all this or not, but I had PRK. And one of the only things, my lips are swollen. One of the only things that I don't like about it is even though I'm like a few years post-op, my eyes still get really, really dry, especially in the morning. I wake up and it's like, it's almost as if they're stuck closed. Like, have you ever had a a sore and um, like a scrape or something and something was op laid on it and got dried to it and you had to take it off? Sometimes that's how my eyes feel in the morning. So I literally have to have a um, some eye drops right next to wherever I'm sleeping. That way when I wake up, when I wake up. I have to remember like sometimes if I just wake up like out of a nightmare or something like that and snatch my eyes open it's it's so painful but if I just wake up and like realize I can't open my eyes I just get the eye drops put it in my eyes a little bit and then I'm able to open my eyes and even with that being said this is still better than when I couldn't see even but I could barely see with glasses right I could barely see with glasses so even it, like when I have to get the surgery redone, I'm getting it redone because I I can I can deal with the dry eyes. It is Friday, y'all, November 10th. It is my son's birthday. It is my son's birthday. I have a teenager, and so all yesterday I was debating on whether or not I was trying to hop on a road to drive seven hours, um, seven hours to him, spend a few hours with him, and then drive back because I'm like. That's seven hours. That's going towards Atlanta traffic. It's just, mm. So I woke up this morning to wish him a happy birthday because obviously I'm still like going back and forth with myself. Because at first I wasn't because I have to study y'all. I take my test, the TMC, in a few more weeks and I gotta be ready. And I'm not even through all my modules. I'm almost through all my modules. I should be through them all and able to go over Kettering again before I take the test. But I gotta get there but um called him this morning to wish him happy birthday and ugh, my boy is just so sweet i showed him his present y'all and he's like oh when do you think it's gonna get here and i'm like oh probably in a few days 
and you can tell you can just hear the little disappointment in his voice and i'm like oh what are you gonna do today he's like oh probably nothing because i know his dad's um gonna do take him to do something a little bit later so i didn't want to tell like not later today but probably next week and i don't want to tell him that because if it's a surprise i don't want to ruin it but um when he said that instantly in my mind i'm like oh, okay well I was just calling to wish you a happy birthday, um, but I'm about to rush to UPS so I can go ahead and bring take um, ship your gift off so it can be there, you know, soon. Y'all, I hung up off that phone and instantly cleaned just a little bit because I'm about to hop on a damn road and go and see my damn baby because he wants to go to the jumping place. And so that's what we're about to do. I'm about to drive this six hours. I just looked at GPS. It should take me about... I should be there around three, around three. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to, well, when I looked at GPS, it says I should be ready around, I should be there around two. So if I hurry up and get ready uh, within the next hour, I should be there around three. But yeah, this is what I got him for his birthday. Um, how do you pronounce this thing's name? Put you, put you, put this from um, Chainsaw, Chainsaw Man. I ended up getting him the um, charging station for his controllers as well as a new controller and then i'm going to be getting him some robux and stuff like that um yeah so i'm about to go ahead and get everything situated i'm so glad i cleaned my car out just a little bit last night maybe the universe knew this was going to happen today because now i don't have to spend the time um cleaning my car out at the very least so let's go upstairs get ready to go Where's, do i have my phone down here let's get ready to go see my son all right i just finished getting ready i just threw on some jeans a crop top and i'm going to be putting this michael kors jacket over that because again the jump in place he wants to go to the jump in place and so i need to wear something i can move around in just a little bit um um, 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 um what should i I'm thinking I'm going to carry this purse because y'all I've been waiting to carry this freaking purse that I bought because I bought it because of the color. Honestly, look at that. How that is such a pretty color. I honestly feel like I showed y'all this too, but um, I'm about to throw my stuff in there real quick. But also the scent that I'm wearing right now is going to be the one that I wore yesterday to work. And that is the coconut cove. Um, my Skylar Coconut Cove with this um, pistachio and salted caramel um, Brazilian crush core whatever that says this one the the pistachio caramel one and then I also have the bum bum cream body oil so I put that on as well and y'all I really like this I like this a lot I feel like I wish the scent lasted a little bit longer but I love the way it looks it gives you like this nice glowy moisturize it's beautiful I like it um I'm thinking I like that combo oh this y'all so I always buy these right because I put this on top of everything so whatever jacket that I'm wearing especially if I'm Honestly, it don't matter what I'm wearing. I feel like I put this on top of my jacket um, because it's just the perfect little, it just smells so good. It smells so sweet. So like when I get up and I go and I throw my jacket on, you got the, got that nice, sweet, you know, aroma. So I'm about to go ahead and head out. Hold on, y'all. Something on my eye. I don't have on eyeshadow. I don't know why it looks like that. I don't really have on anything. Just covered up a few scars. All right, let me grab my stuff. So I have my ID and all that stuff on my hospital badge. So let me go ahead and get all of this because I need all of it. It's my debit card in here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get that, throw it in my purse. Mm. Now as far as the lip gloss I need is downstairs. Cut this light off. So, and I had to rush and take the trash out too because our trash runs on Friday. And y'all, I think I missed it because when I went out there to take the trash out, um, the truck was rolling by, but I'm hoping that's his first go around because they go around twice. So I hope that was just the first time. And um, he's still gotta come around 
for the second time. But let me grab my stuff real quick. All right, so I have on, obviously, y'all, my favorite piece of jewelry in the world. Like, I don't understand, y'all. And uh, I look at this ring, and it, when it glistens and stuff so randomly, like, it's super shiny. But then when it hits the light just right, it's super shiny. And I'm like, oh, my God, this thing is beautiful. Obviously, I have on my everyday necklace that I wear. I'm about to put on my Pandora bracelets. Oops. I'm about to put on my Pandora bracelet. And y'all, I be struggling to put this thing on. Like, when y'all buy yourself, if y'all have a Pandora bracelet, when y'all buy yourself, how do y'all put y'all bracelet on? Because I kind of like hold it like this and kind of, kind of try to just, I don't know. Hold on. I just, I just figure it out, honestly. Boom. Got it. Okay. Got that. And then I'm going to put on my anklet that have this T on it. Trey bought me this. He bought me this. This anklet, I wear this almost every day. It's so cute. Got a tea on it, that man. I'm not putting nothing on on top of some lotion on my dang feet. Y'all, my ankles are dry. Just throw it in a bag. I love getting the gift set. When I do buy my perfumes, if they have it in a gift set, more than likely I'm going to get it in a gift set. Because when it comes with the little hand lotions or the, um, the sample perfumes, I love it. I love it so much. I always just throw the sample, the sample perfume, the little bitty travel size in the car. Then I have a bunch of like name brand hand lotions. I just love them. My favorite lotion so far would have to be the Gucci Bloom lotion because what I notice about a lot of the brand perfumes is they're like super watery. They're not really, they're not really thick. They smell really good. But I like a nice, thick, creamy lotion. And I feel like the, um, oh, and they feel kind of like powdery at the end once they dry down. But I feel like the Gucci Bloom, the formula, whatever they did to it, they did really good. So I really like that one. Yeah, I just hopped in a car. And I feel a migraine coming on. I get I get chronic my I have chronic migraines I get migraines all the time it can be from honestly I don't know what they're from I don't know what triggers them I just know they hurt and sometimes they come on so fast hold on y'all I'm trying to see something they come on so fast so strong so I keep some excedrin so one I get Botox for my migraines right I get Botox for my migraines I also take topamax every night for my migraines for a maintenance medit for main maintaining for maintenance of my migraines and um i have the max salt because i still even with all of that i still get breakthrough migraines with the botox they're not as bad but they still hurt and they still debilitate me um so i have these medications that i also take when i um when i feel one coming on but these never really work the way they should for me um they take they definitely it's a hit or miss they work sometimes sometimes they don't um in the world. so what i do now is i take the extra strength etc and i don't even have any water in here i usually keep like a water bottle or something in here but again i cleaned my car out last night so i have this watered down sonic drink i had last night <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and take this pill and take a disintegrating pill and go and grab some food. I'm thinking I might go to Dunkin' Donuts, depending on where, what area I have to drive towards. But Y'all, these days, every time I look at the clock, it is 11, as it's 9-11. That's been a thing for the past, I don't know, like year three years or something like that every time i look like it stopped a little bit a few years ago and now all of a sudden every time i look at the clock it's 9 11 look, look at that 9 11 that's crazy every single time something is 9 11 um and then i put this under my tongue <clears throat> so i'm about to let that disintegrate go grab some food and hit the road okay okay i get it jeez oh 
got a headache. It's going away though. It's definitely not as bad as it was earlier. I just put some air in my tires. I'm about to grab some food. Good morning, what can I have for you? Hi, can I have four orders of your snack and bacon? And then a medium matcha latte on ice. You said four orders of snack and bacon originally? Y yes, please. Let me see if we have enough orders. Okay. Please All right. So you said four orders of snack and bacon, and what was the next thing? It was um, a matcha latte on ice with light ice. I'm looking at this. Y'all look at this. So I'm at Dunkin', right? And I'm looking at this loaded with jol jolly. Um, it says loaded hash browns with jalapeno cheddar, queso, and crispy bacon. Y'all, that looks good, actually. Like, that's, does that look good to y'all? I don't know, I'm thinking about it. I'm texting Trey. Y'all, he been out there living his best life. They took a road trip to go to some um, comedy. They, as in him and a few of his friends that he have out there, they took a road trip to go to some comedy show. And he texts me at 3.44, talking about home-ish, sweet home-ish, LOL, can't say home because you're not here. He's sweet. But I'm like, oh, you're just out there living your best life. I'm glad he's out there having fun. I wish I w I want to make friends here so I can like go and do things because I still I don't I don't know I don't like doing things by myself but I don't like being around people for too long I don't know it's weird so I just stay to myself <laughs> Vincenzo's 